when Tupac got shot at Quad Studios, you wasn't in New York, right? No, when Pac got shot, and the first time he got shot in Quad Studio, I was actually in Atlanta and um, at his house. And it was myself, his sister, Setua, um, Edie, Castro, um, and Gaddafi. And I just remember his sister waking up, waking up the house in the middle of the night um, saying Pac got shot. You know what I mean? And um, so everybody was being patient for some updates. You know what I mean? Um, she called her mother and and we were just sitting around the phone just waiting for some updates. And a few hours later, Pac called. And he spoke to everybody in the house. And then, you know, I was new at that particular time to the crew. So Pac told him to pass the phone to me. And the first thing he said it was, uh, Mood, did you think I would let them take me away from you so soon? You know what I mean? So... And I'm a youngster, 16, 17 years old. And I'm like, wait a minute, this dude is in the hospital, just came out of surgery. And he, <laughs> and he trying to console me when it should be the opposite. You know what I mean? But that's the type of person Pac was. How do you feel about people that say Tupac didn't get shot five times? He only got shot once, which was when he pulled out his gun and accidentally shot himself. You know, I, I came across a few interviews where people said Pac didn't get shot five times. Um, you know, and, and Pac himself was upset. You know, he even addressed that. We said, you know what I mean? That he can't even be in pain in peace. Like people just take, you know, he felt like everybody was attacking him. Pac got shot five times. You know what I mean? Five times. And I, I, we actually seen the wounds because when he was at Jasmine Guy house, he pretty much was shot up through his body where, you know, most of the time he had to walk around with just, you know, just boxes on because it was difficult for him to put pants on and off and shirts. So we seen the wounds. You know what I mean? And, and he, he's not, I don't think nobody, and especially a person like Pac, he didn't have an agenda to make it seem like he got shot more than he got shot. You know what I mean? He got shot five times. He was thankful that he survived it. I, I believe he got shot twice in the head, you know, and the rest, you know, different parts of his body. So, you know, when people say that, it usually comes from people. If you look at the people that, you know, go around and try to, you know, refute this claim that Pac got shot five times, it's people that wasn't there. Or if they was there, they don't. They they wasn't close with Pac like that. They didn't come to the hospital. You know what I mean? It was just it was just hearsay, rumors. You know what I mean? Because Pac checked out of the hospital the same day he got shot. He checked out of the hospital. Right, right. You know what I mean? And what happened is he went to first. He was in a hotel, um, hiding out. You know, I, I remember going back to New Jersey. Then I went back to New York and I came to the door and I remember Pac opened the door with the Glock in his hand. Because Pac was paranoid, you know what I mean? So when he opened the door with the gun in his hand, um, and then he told me, like, the, the outlaws, Gaddafi, Edi, and um, Castro, they went to to get some lunch. A couple of days after that, he checked out of the hotel, and he went to Jasmine Guy House. And I remember when we used to be chilling in the living room, just, you know, having a good time, Big Stretch came and said, Jimmy Henchman told me to tell you, Pac, that you don't want to go to war because you don't got your money right. And that's why Pac ended the last song, Against All Odds, with now I got my money right now I want to go to war because he never he never he never forgot about that you know what I mean so for me growing up even though I talked to Madge which is Stretch brother you know uh, at the end of the day it's so many family and so many of the homies intertwined together because Madge is still cool with a lot of the homies from LA that that love Pac and like Pac big homies and I spoke to Madge um, and, he, and you know Madge was like my my brother you know he never went against Pac he loved Pac. You know, and it could have been a misunderstanding. Ain't no telling. It could have been a misunderstanding. But I heard him relay that message from Jimmy Iovine. And back then, I was totally fresh from the block, a street dude. And that didn't rub, it didn't rub me the right way because, you know, when you come from the hood, you like, how come my homie is relying a message from my enemy? You know what I mean? So I remember looking at Pac like, something ain't up. Something ain't right about this. Why did Tupac leave the hospital so soon? Pac left the hospital so soon because he 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 wasn't gonna be sitting duck, you know. He felt like, you know, the people that came to kill him in that the studio, there's a chance they might come back to the hospital to fi finish the job. So Pac was like, man, I'm not about to be sitting duck. You know, he went against the the orders of the doctor, checked himself out of the hospital, and he felt more secure around his people. And you were staying at Jasmine Guy House, right? When Tupac was there recovering. I was staying at Jasmine Guy House while he was recovering, along with the rest of the outlaws. A a along with myself, Castro, um, Edie, and Gaddafi. It was all of us standing, you know what I mean? 
And it was just like, you know what I mean? She lived in a, a part of New York. I don't know if it was Brooklyn or whatever. She lived in a good neighborhood, a safe neighborhood. You know what I mean? And Pop felt secure there. And besides, we was all strapped up. You know what I mean? Like we was on, we was, you know, we all had guns on us. And we was, we felt like at that particular time, we had the whole Pac down. And Pac, I remember, bro, that guy kept a Glock, even in Jasmine Guy House. He, he was, he, most of the time, he spent the time on the couch. And he always had that gun by his side. How was it like staying at Jasmine Guy House? Any stories? Besides just clowning, you know what I mean? Because Pac, was, you know, I remember we used to sit around and just joke and clown. Because Pac wasn't the type of individual, you know, he was shot up. And he was going through a lot. He was going, he had some court cases he was going through. Um, he had a lot, he, he had a lot to deal with to be a 22, 23 year old, um, you know, kid pretty much at that particular time, but he was always joking. So at Jasmine Guy House, we was always joking and having time, even though while he was, you know, healing, he still had that good spirit about him. Big stretch. He was relaying messages to Tupac while he was at Jasmine Guy House. Do you think he was going back telling Jimmy Hinchman that Tupac was hiding out at Jasmine Guy House? Um, that's a good question. I, I won't be able to answer. Um, and I won't, and I won't be able to say that, you know, big stretch was relaying messages. You know, I just remember that one message where he said, Jimmy, I, Jimmy henchman said, you don't have your money, right? You're not ready to go to war. That's the only thing I remember. You know what I mean? And I'm not sure if he went back and told Jimmy henchman that Pac was hiding in Jasmine guy house. Nobody never tried to come to Jasmine guy house to do anything to Pac. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure. I can't really answer that. You know, Pac, he felt betrayed by Big Stretch. And I, I think I don't think it's a secret. You know what I mean? I think he felt betrayed. And that's why, you know, you heard it through his music when he spoke about it. He felt betrayed. He felt that, you know what I mean? This was an individual um, when he was locked up. You know, after he got shot, he got locked up. He never came to visit him in prison. Um, Pac was hurt. Like, he, he felt like a brother betrayed him. You know, but then, you know, I, I seen some interviews from Madge. And he was saying back then, me and my brother was young. You know, we we was young. We didn't even have a license, ID. We couldn't even go visit Pac in prison. So a lot of things that Pac, you got to realize too, bro. Now that I'm older and Pac is like, a, he, he's a big brother to me. Now that I'm older and I look back at a certain things, you got to realize Pac was young. You know what I mean? When he died, he was 25 years old. So do we say that everything that Pac believed was true? No, we can't say that. You know what I mean? Because Pac was young. He made mistakes. Nobody infallible. You know what I mean? Um, and one example, for example, I would say, like, Pac really thought Haitian Jack, um, and I know this is going to be controversial, Pac thought Haitian Jack really set him up. Now, when it comes to the court case, when Pac was saying that, you know, Haitian Jack had the same crime as him, and all of a sudden they have a different court date, and that's something different. But as far as the people that came and shot Pac, now we know it actually had nothing to do with Haitian Jack. It was really Jimmy Hinchman. It was really Jimmy Hinchman. Jimmy Hinchman homies spilled the beans and said he paid us to do this to Pac. So you have to realize Pac at that particular time, because he was young, you know what I mean? Um, he felt like he, he was facing so many different people at so many different times. And I mean, at the same time, and he was facing so many different, you know, he had so many things against him. 25 years old, just getting shot up, people trying to kill him. A girl lied on him and said that he raped her. He went to prison. Um, Interscope Records left him in prison. Rock. Pac was going through a lot. And he was on, what, 23, 24 years old. So everything he said, and and I'm not trying to say he right or wrong when it comes to Big Stretch. You know what I mean? I can't say that Big Stretch played a part by stabbing Pac in the back. I can't say that. But I know Pac was hurt from some of the actions. You know, so when later on, when I, I looked at the interview for Madge and he said, well, we couldn't go visit Pop because we didn't have ID back then. I remember back then, if you don't have ID, you're not getting to no prison. You know what I mean? So, you know, Pac, um, I'm sure that if he was alive, you know, things would have been clearer for him. Do you think Puffy and Biggie knew Tupac was going to get set up at Quad Studios? Another question, um, do I think um puffy and biggie knew see this is another thing. <laughs> you know Pac felt this way and this is something that you never know bro you know what i mean you never you never know if biggie and puffy knew that Pac was going to be you know robbed at that particular time you know just a lot of things even if it wasn't even if they had nothing to do with it it's just a lot of things that came after that wasn't perfect it wasn't good timing for example Pac gets shot get robbed 
go to jail. A couple months later, Biggie drop a, a record called Who Shot You? Talking about a person getting robbed. So things just didn't add up. So even if they didn't know, that was kind of a rookie move, especially if this is your friend. Like if Biggie's saying that Pac is my your friend and you know that he just got shot and robbed, and why would you drop that record a couple months after? Even though you claim you did it a while ago, you know what I mean? So some things just didn't add up. How paranoid was Tupac after the Quad Studios incident? Because you said that um, he wasn't really trusting people like that after that incident, right? Man, Pac didn't trust nobody after that. He was, he was um, he's very paranoid. Um, he trusted his close ones, you know, people that was close to him, family especially. Um, but he had to move differently. You know, Pac moved different after that. Like I said, when I went to New Jersey, New Jersey and I came back, my homies dropped me off. And I know that even my homies... I had to make him drop me off down the street because Pac was like, please don't bring nobody to my hotel. So my homie, Shala B and Corey, I made them drop me off a little f down the street, a, a, you know, a little distance away from the hotel. And I walked to the hotel. And when I got to the door, you know, knocked on the door and ring the doorbell, I remember Pac, he opened the door. He was, he was, he was limping because he just got out of the hospital a day ago. I remember he opened the door, he had a Glock in his hand. And I looked and I was like, wow. And then I was like, Where, where's Gaddafi? And he's like, oh, they went to get some sandwiches. So, you know, he came to the door with the gun in his hand. 